I decided I needed to add a little more black, so I just used the uh, cap here and added some more of this black ink since I already had it mixed up. But I really want to try another one, so let's do that. I think that this time I'm going to start with this teal color. a little over here and I think I'm going to try to use this knife since I like the way that that worked. Try that. I've got a little black on here. That's okay. I don't think you can see that there's these cool little lines caused by the separation, like I said before. Now I'm just going to see, make some marks with my skewer here. And you're probably not going to be able to see this, but I'm just making some random lines on here. It'll just add some texture in the end. What happens if I roll this through? dragging a little bit of that paint out. Okay, and now how about if we use some of this yellow, like I did before with the black, how I made the rings. I think I'm just going to put some here. Try to get some up on my bottle cap here. Let's see how that goes. Okay, and now let's sort of do the reverse. Maybe kind of redo the reverse with a little of this black ink here. Dip the work in that and see if I can't make this work like a stamp. So. I still got a ton of this yellow, so let's just drag it through with this teething comb. Uh, teething. <laughs> teasing comb. And like before, I'm just gonna this will lift up some of the paint there. So we got a big old white blob here. Let's see what we do about that. What shall we do? What shall we do? Let's take a little bit of the blue. Okay, just a little bit of the blue. See, I didn't put my pin back in and it dried already. There we go. A little bit of the blue here, not too much because I don't still like this green color. So. It's okay if you end up covering what you've already put down. There's no rule that says, you know, what you put down has to stay there. So I'm not going to worry if I cover this up. It'll just add more layers of texture. What would happen? It's probably really dangerous to do, but what would happen if I dropped a little water on here? That might have been a mistake because it is deli paper and it is supposed to withstand water, so that may not do anything at all. But no worries, I'm just going to take this roll of paper towels, which I always have nearby, and let's just roll it up here. Oh, and the neat little bonus is getting a little imprint of this pattern from the paper, paper towel, onto the background. 
also drying it off a little bit too because it was really soaking wet. And then look at this. Can bet I'll be using this for something later on. Okay. Dry this off a little bit. Maybe just use my high tech dryer here. Okay, let's add some white. That sounded rude, I'm sorry. And maybe try this and see if I can drag some of the paint through with this. That's kind of neat. I'm really liking that. Let's see if I can put it a little closer together and see what happens if I do it this way. This is making a really terrible noise. I hope you can't hear it because it's really hurting my ears a lot. Maybe not my best work, but I'm kind of liking it. Because I've kept it to just a couple of colors here. The turquoisey color and the blue and the white with a hint of black. Um, I could let this dry and use this as a a starting point for another kind of background. Just collage this in or cut shapes out of it and hmm, maybe I'll try to do that. Maybe I'll try to cut some shapes out of that and see what that looks like in my journal page. Okay, well I think you get the idea. There's really nothing to hold you back from creating your own backgrounds using a little bit of paint and whatever things you happen to have in your house. See you next time.